And welcome folks, welcome to a new Let's Play. Today we're going to play System Shock 2, a game that probably needs no introduction, but in case you haven't heard of this game, or you still want me to give an introduction, I will do so. System Shock 2 is quite obviously the successor of System Shock, uh, which I believe was published in 1994. This game was published in 1999, more precisely on August 11, 1999. Um, both of these games were developed by Looking Glass Studios, and both of these games are a mix. Well, they are sort of a mixture between a survival horror game and an RPG, and they are set in a cyberpunk setting. Um, this game was also developed, apart from Looking Glass Studios, by Irrational Games, which is a company that was founded in 1997 by three former. Looking Glass employees, um, most notably among them Ken Levine, which is actually the, uh, the designer of this game. Uh, yeah, what else is there to say about this game? It is based on the Dark Engine, which apart from this game also powered Thief and Thief 2. Um, so if you've played this game then you may notice some similarities to the, uh, those two games. Uh, yeah, and in case you have never heard of System Shock, well, you will still probably have heard of Bioshock, which is, uh, which, which was actually developed uh, together with Bioshock Infinite by Irrational Games, um, and Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, well, at least Bioshock, um, is quite similar to this game. In some as aspects, for instance, this game, or rather its predecessor, System Shock, uh, introduced a system called Vita Chambers, which, well, in case you die, you get basically resurrected, um, but you lose some, well, nano points or whatever. Okay, so it's it's quite similar, but um, there are also some big differences because because this game is definitely not a shooter. Um, in fact, you really want to avoid getting into combat in this game. It is really more like a stealth game, more like Thief. Um, yeah, so maybe just one, uh, just a quick word um, regarding my motivation to play this game. I bought this game when it came out origi originally. Um, and played it, but then, I, I, well, I didn't finish it, or rather, I couldn't finish it because it, yeah, was simply too scared. So, it, so I, so I will probably, at more than one point in time, scream like a little girl. So if you just, well, to give you a little warning, um, I'm really, I'm really very, I'm very prone to jump scares and the like. Which you may have noticed if you watched my Wages of Sin Let's Play. Um, so I played this game, um, but didn't finish it. And then a few years later, I tried to um, play it on my new computer, which was not possible because the so this game was is protected by some awful copyright scheme called um, Copy Disc. No, something like something that sounds like Copy Disc. Okay, it's it's really a, a very horrible piece of software, but basically it just didn't work with Windows XP, and so I couldn't play my, the game that I, well, bought. And then a few few more like, blah, a few more years later, GreatOldGames.com fortunately re-released this game uh, without this god-awful DRM, and that's the reason, um, yeah, why we are going to play this today. First of all, because it's possible, and second of all, because I would really like to, well, I need some motivation to help me finish this game, and that is me doing a let's play of it. So I will stop talking now and start a new game. Um, yeah, we will play a normal, um, even though it'd probably be better for me if I would play this on easy, but. Um, 
yeah, I will still play this on normal. Uh, okay, these are the options. Well, there, so there are some problems with the audio in this game. I can't. Um, so they can't really adjust the uh, audio uh, from within the settings because so the audio level for some reason is not affected by that. Okay, I will stop talking now and we will start the game. Enjoy the introduction to System Shock 2. Look at you, hacker. A p -p pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? In 2072, a rogue artificial intelligence known as Shodan lost her mind. In her limitless imagination, Shodan saw herself as a goddess destined to inherit the earth. That image was snuffed out by the hacker who created her. February 3rd is the day the magic happens. The Von Braun, the first starship in history capable of traveling at faster than light speed, will undertake her maiden voyage. This incredible journey is the result of teamwork between the UNN Protectorate and the incredible scientific minds of the newly relicensed Trioptimum Corporation. Imagine being able to travel to distant star systems in a period of weeks. It's all part of Triop's commitment to the future. The Von Braun is packed with over 1.8 billion flight, scientific, and security systems. Nearly all developed by Trioptimum and its wholly owned subsidiaries. Providing security for the Von Braun as she plows through the heavens will be the UNN Rickenbacker. At her helm will be no less than Captain William Bedford Diego himself, hero of the Battle of Boston Harbor during the Eastern States Police Action. This incredible union of government and corporation is made possible by an intricate series of docking mechanisms that will allow the Rickenbacker to piggyback its way into jump space. Sleek. Fast. Revolutionary. Who knows what wonders await our crews in the bosom of the cosmos. All we do know is that it's a great day for mankind. As a UNN Dungeon, we've been hijacked by an unknown force. Ship security has been compromised. Do not allow the ship to Repeat, do not allow the ship to leave under any circumstances. I don't know what we're against here. Okay, so that was the uh, introductory cutscene which Welcome to the Ramsey Center UNN Recruitment Facility. Please watch your step when leaving the train. The ground shafts at the end of the hall will take you to the street level training and recruitment center. Please proceed to the ground shafts. Yeah, which gave you <coughs> a little bit of backstory, and I, it's quite loud here, so I will get. Um, yeah, try to find a cozy little corner. So you've heard a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of the backstory. So basically, the story. And that happened during the first game, where we fought some artificial intelligence by the name of Shodan. Uh, here we're playing, well, apparently someone else, um, not the hacker that we played in the first game. Um, yeah, and at the moment we are some three years before the events that we uh, are taking place in this game. So we shall proceed to the Uh, to the street level, um, yeah. We could also take a quick look around. Um, as far as I'm aware, here there are no um, Easter eggs on this level, but there is one in the level above. Yeah, this is just very, very boring. Um, okay, let's get. Step into the grab shaft to proceed to the street level recruitment. Let's get to the street level. Zoom. Okay. 
yeah, and as you can see, um, the graphics are a bit, um, well, at least, yeah. Okay, the, the, the graphics, well, um, Okay, technically they are not bad, but some but some things are just look plain ridiculous today, like this very very blocky um, sky texture that actually, um, yeah, not just it also has some quantization artifacts, so that's that looks quite horrible. But apart from that, I think the grand the game actually looks quite uh, good even today. Yeah, and. I've already showed off one uh, mechanic that is very important in this game. That is the mantling mechanic. So we can uh, get onto um, yeah surfaces that we can't jump on by holding down the spacebar. And two women that very much look alike. Standing in front of each other and doing what looks like yoga or something like. Well, not really. Okay, they are just very idle. Okay. There's also another phone. This device is temporarily out of order. Okay, why are all these telephones in the city out of order? Hmm. Okay. Probably because the developers were too lazy to implement uh, the phone mechanic. Okay, what is? Oh, there's another phone. I think you. This device is temporarily out of order. Okay. It appears that all these telephones are indeed out of order. And more trash cans. Yeah. The the e stack that I was talking about is. Right there, it's a basketball. It's now in our inventory. Um, I can't bring up the inventory right now because, well, the game won't allow me to. Uh, but it is in our inventory and actually um, at one point later in the game you can actually use the this basketball <coughs> uh, to score, yeah, to score to score a, a hit in a in a okay what are these called basketball so the the ring where you can where you put the basketball in you know what i mean okay. the thing okay where you can put the basketball in the thing and that actually gives you another easter egg before you choose your career you'll want to learn some basic abilities First, you should go into the basic training center. When you're done with basic training, proceed to the advanced training area. Yeah, uh, there's also a very brief um, tutorial. It actually is, yeah, it's very, it's indeed very basic. So I would, I'm a bit tempted to skip this, but um, since I'm also a completionist, I will do that nonetheless. To pick up some basic skills you'll need to get by in the service, enter this Cyberlink booth. Inside, you'll learn the basic skills you'll need to get started. Okay. Welcome, trainee. While you're in our virtual training courses, we provide you with a simulated cyber interface. This training interface is identical to an actual military-grade cyber interface. Now, let's try it out. Move the mouse. See how it changes where you look? That means you're in shoot mode. Hit the tab key. This puts you in use mode, where you can use your mouse to interact with items in the world. Open your primary MFD, or multifunction display, by clicking on the MFD button near the bottom of the screen. This display shows your strengths in various areas. When you're ready to continue, press the tab key to go back to shoot mode. Try changing between modes until you get the hang of it. Follow the red path along the ground, to the next training station. Okay, I, I just love how in these tutorial missions <laughs> they just very unceremoniously break the merchant right at the at the beginning of the game. I mean, 
I mean, it's a, yeah, as I suppose it's difficult not to break the fourth wall, but somewhat still a bit irritating. To pick up items, center them on your screen and right click. This will automatically place that item into your inventory. Yeah. View your inventory, press the tab key. You can move items around your inventory by left clicking and dragging them around. To drop an item, drag it from your inventory into the 3D view and release the mouse button. Yeah, these uh, tutorials are indeed very, very basic. Um, can I not pick the... Ah, I can. I was not close enough before. Yeah, let's eat these chips and these. Uh, this orange juice. Yeah, as you can see there, um, the interface works as the tutorial person claimed it does. To use items like buttons in computers, center them in your view and click the right mouse button. All usable items will have brackets around them. Highlight the button on the pillar and right click. This will activate the lift. Mm. Try it out. Yeah, I did that already, so... If you can still see your inventory display, it means you're in use mode. Hit tab to return to shoot mode. No, I'm, I'm really not in the uh, inventory mode. Loch mode. Monsieur. Object before you is a med hypo. Pick it up and then press tab to go into use mode. Right clicking on the med hypo will use it and restore some needed hit points. Your hit points are displayed by a bar in the lower left corner of your screen. Many objects in your inventory can be used by right-clicking on them. Okay, will you drop another... Yeah, you will. Um, yeah, so met... So these are um, obviously very useful, um, but they are also quite rare, so... I've always found myself lacking in met typos. Well, um, you can of course buy these med hypos also at uh, vending machines but then you also need the equivalent the equivalent of money in this game hmm. see the crate in front of you to search it center it on your screen and right click if you are in use mode <laughs> simply move the pointer to the crate and right click to take an item from that container simply left click on it this will automatically place that item in your inventory to close the container window and return to shoot mode, press the tab key. Yeah, um, so quite One of the most important tools basic. you have as a soldier is your PDA. This device stores audio logs, emails, and other useful information. Click on the disk icon near the bottom of your screen to bring up the PDA display. Currently, the contents of your PDA are empty. Now, pick up the audio log in front of you. Okay, let's play this message. This message is coming from the audio log you just picked up. You can use your PDA at any time to play any audio log or email you've received. In the field, the PDA is also used for keeping track of your current mission objectives and obtaining help information. Okay, and I was uh, busy actually, while that text log was, text log was playing, I was busy Texting someone. Um, yeah. So now that's it's time to learn about jumping and mantling. To jump, simply press the space bar. Some surfaces can be mantled onto by holding down the space bar. Mantling lets you pull yourself up to ledges and other high places in front of you. Give it a try. Yeah, this is actually the only part of this tutorial where where you really, really need to pay attention and. When I first played this game, well, I so, I got so bored in by this tutorial at this point already that I just skipped this um, and didn't learn how you mantle on surfaces, uh, which actually posed to be kind of annoying later. Um, yeah, and as you can see, you can also mantle on while jumping, which is also quite handy. I actually, I actually don't know whether um, the Thief games also had this mantling mechanic. Um, yeah, but I would guess so. You've done well. Remember, if you're unclear on any aspect of what you've just learned, you can repeat the training as often as you wish. Uh, I don't think I will do that. Um, 
I really have no incentive to do that. Um, yeah. So the advanced training is actually also quite well basic. Um, if you've completed basic training, you're ready for the advanced lessons provided here. Advanced training will familiarize you with the three key areas of military service. Weapons training, technical training, and psionics training. Approach the Cyberlink booth of your choice to train in that area. When you finish training in the three areas, proceed directly to the recruitment center to choose and start your military career. Um, yes, yeah, so this game has basically three character classes that you can play. You can play as a soldier. Where you mostly concentrate on, well, weapons, obviously. Um, you can play a hacker, where you obviously concentrate on hacking skills. And try to not to activate that um, annoying sound. And you can play as a. And you can play as a, yeah, psi person that uses your psi power to do things like pull. Um, Objects towards you with telekinesis, or yeah, it's, so if you played Bioshock, it's um, it's quite similar to that where you had this uh, these. I actually forgot what these were called. Um, it's where you had you had weapons, and then you had these sort of powers, and these psi powers are basically that. Um, yeah. All right, wannabe. If you want to learn the weapon skills it takes to even think about joining the Marines, come on in. We're looking for a few good men. Yeah, the soldier um, um, class, in my opinion, is the least interesting one. Um. Good to have you on board. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, the UNN has kindly provided you with a virtual cyber interface and all the simulated skill levels you'll need for the training tasks. But don't get too cocky. They'll disappear once you leave the booth. One reason why I don't like the soldier class so much is that uh, weapons degrade very quickly in this game. I will teach you how to handle a firearm. Pick up the pistol and the clip from the table. You can equip the weapon in one of two ways. Bring up your inventory and drag the pistol to your weapons equip slot near the right hand side of your inventory. If that's too slow for you, you can use the hotkeys on the keyboard. Press 2. If the pistol was in your inventory, it will equip for you automatically. To lock and load the ammo clip, hit the R key or hit the reload button on the lower right corner of your screen. <laughs> Once you've loaded the firearm, take a shot at the dummy robot by pressing your left mouse button when in shoot mode. Notice how its health bar gets shorter as you chip away at it. Yeah, um... And I did, actually didn't pay attention, but you might have noticed that um, the icon on the right, bottom right corner went from green to blue, uh, green to yellow, I mean. Yeah, and now it's gone from yellow to orange, um, as far as I can tell. Some items need to be charged with energy before they can be used. Pick up the laser pistol. Now use the recharging station nearby. The recharge station will juice up all of your energy-based items. Weapons, batteries, you name it. Yeah, and the um, the fact that these weapons degrade so quickly is the reason why I don't... Well, why combat is really not the main um, point of this game. So you definitely want to avoid combat if possible. Weapons are not fine wines. They do not get better with age. The colored dot on the lower right corner of the screen tells you what kind of shape your firearm is in. Green is good, red is bad. To fight the effects of wear and tear, a soldier with maintenance skill can use a maintenance tool to improve the condition of his weapon. Just pick up the tool, open your inventory, and drag the tool onto your pistol. Remember that maintenance tools are only good for a single use. Yes, uh, these tools are quite useful. Um, the obvious problem is that uh, yeah, it's now uh, green. The obvious problem is that, well, you sort of can use them only one time. Um, and I'm out of ammunition. Of course. Good work. Now you're ready for the Marines. 
Take a look at the other training areas first before you enlist. They might just come in handy. Okay, we will uh, do the hacker tutorial now. Inside, we'll teach you the basics of some technical skills you'll need in the Navy. Yeah, and I, um, I find it quite funny how they um, kind of portray these Marines um, as dumb. Um, dumb Bretnicks where these Navy people more like, um, more sound like, um, well, guys from MIT or Harvard. Or at least what you, what you would expect them to sound like. Welcome. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, we'll provide you with a temporary cyber interface and the skills you need to accomplish the training tasks. But they'll only last so long as you're in the booth. Okay, yeah, um... Yeah, sorry, I was again texting someone. Object in front of you is a container of nanites. Nanites are consumed whenever you perform technical tasks, such as hacking or repairing. When you pick up the container of nanites, they do not go in your general inventory, but are instead displayed in use mode on the bottom left of your screen. Yeah. Um, Walk over to the keypad by the door and try out hacking. So nan nanites are obviously the uh, equivalent equivalent of money in this game. Use um, the keypad by right-clicking on it. To the right of the number pad, you'll see an orange tab labeled Hack. Left-click on the tab. Text will appear indicating the difficulty of the hack and any bonuses that apply. Click on the Start button to begin hacking. Yeah, you'll and see you... a grid of nodes. Clicking on a node will either turn it bright or dark. To successfully hack, you must connect three bright nodes in a straight line. Beware the ice nodes with the red outlines. If one of these turns dark, you fail the hack, and you might break the item you're working on, or worse. You can restart your hack attempt at any time by hitting the reset button, though you'll have to pay the nanite cost again. Yeah, um, so you need um, these nanites for hacking, and also when you die, these you lose some nanites. Yeah, okay, let's do this. Um, yeah, this, this hacking is... Yeah, it's, it's a very very simple. I would I wouldn't even call it a puzzle game. Um, well, I guess technically it is a puzzle, um, and you have to be quick because the door locks. Um, yeah. So these, um, of course, these hacking puzzles. You can use nanites to buy items from replicators. To use a replicator, right-click on it, then left-click on the item you wish to purchase. The item you purchased will drop into the slot below. Make sure you pick up your purchases before you leave. Uh, yeah. So, okay, I forgot what. I actually forgot what I was trying. Little, and I can't speak. I actually forgot what I was trying to say. So I guess it wasn't really that important. Um, yeah, you can obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but you can hack vending machines, which makes them a bit cheaper. Um, which is something I can't understand. I mean, I mean, if I can, if I'm able to hack a vending machine, uh, I would suppose I would be able to uh, make it so that I can purchase all the goods for no nanets at all. Uh, but this only, well, reduces the price, which makes hacking these machines actually yeah, not that. Not that great, actually, yeah. You learn the basics of the technical skills. There are several other technical skills you'll learn throughout the course of your career, such as repairing items and modifying weapons. The cyber interfaces for these tasks are similar to the hacking interface. Before you enlist in the Navy, try out the other training courses. They'll be useful. Uh, yeah. Inside, you will learn how to reach out with your mind. Do not let fear block your path. Um, we will actually play as a Navy guy, so as a hacker, but you do need, um, no matter which class you play, you still need to use some basic weapons and you do need uh, to use some size skills. We've provided you with a virtual interface and the temporary ability to project simulated psionic powers. Once you leave this area, these powers will be lost to you. Hmm. 
Yeah. The red bar at the um, lower left of your screen tells you how many psi points you have. Psi points symbolize the current ability to use your psi powers. Psi hypos replenish your psi points. Try using a psi hypo and watch your psi points increase. When you've reached your maximum in psi points, move to the next station. Yeah, no surprises there. Um, you have, similar to the health bar, you have this psi bar. And similar to the psi meta you have these psi hypos. Psi hypos. Um, I find these psi, hy the psi hypos actually not that scarce as the health hypos. Um, but maybe that's because I didn't... I mostly played as hacker characters before and not as psi characters. This psi amp amplifies your psi powers and lets you project them into the real world. To equip it, pick it up and then hit the tilde key. Firing the psi amp activates your currently selected psi discipline. You currently have access to two disciplines, cryokinesis and kinetic redirection. Go into use mode and click on the arrows on the bottom right of the screen. This will cycle through your available psi disciplines. Later, clicking on the arrows above the number to the left will allow you to select psi disciplines from higher tiers. Use cryokinesis to destroy the robot and kinetic redirection to pull that nanite container towards you. Be careful. Holding down the mouse button can augment the power, but holding it down for too long will cause burnout, which will damage you. If you run out of psi points, use another psi hypo. And again, um, a, similar, a similarity to Bioshock where um, these kind of, well, magical powers that you had also were projected um, into the yeah real, real world using some kind of uh, MacGuffin device. So this thing here, this ball, is that thing uh, yeah, that you use in System Shock. Um, quite the, so the cryokinesis skill it's actually not that great, I think. But what is extremely useful and what you definitely want to learn is the uh, the telekinesis or psi pull as it's co called. Um, because that is just extremely handy. Um, yeah. Okay, that's the end of this Mastery of the mind is a slow little tutorial. Return to this area if you need more guidance. Before you enlist in the OSA, it would be useful to experiment in the other training courses. Uh, yeah, I think we, well, we did that already. Um, so we can now leave, finally leave this tutorial area. Here's where you make your choice, soldier. Here's where you enlist in one of the three branches of the military. Once you decide on your branch of service, there's no going back. A shuttle will take you to a UNN Orbital Space Station, where you'll receive a briefing regarding your yearly postings. Good luck. Okay, and here's the point where um, I previously regretted not having paid attention to this tutorial mission. So, you can jump down to this little area, um, and it seems that you are stuck here. And indeed you are, um, unless you have paid attention and learned how to use the mantling ability. So, when I first, when I previously played this game, I actually didn't pay attention and then I, yeah, uh, had to reload the game, which was sort of embarrassing. Okay, and we got pushed by someone into this room, um, something that will happen again and again. Um, we are apparently in space. Uh, and it's, it's a comfortable 22 degrees. Um, and there's a guy. Hello, guy. Does not seem to pay attention uh, to anything at all. 
He's for sure not looking at the screen. I think he seems to look at the... This... Um, shaft. It actually appears to be open. Flammable. And a little, little graphical glitch. Okay, that's the first year. Um, hmm. Come aboard the space station Chesapeake Bay, sailor. It looks like you've picked up some standard weapon skills at basic on Coronado Island. Now it's time for your tour of duty. Your tour will consist of four postings over four years. In this man's navy, you're given a choice of three different postings a year. It's up to you to decide what kind of career you want to have, so choose wisely. Just approach a shuttle bay to receive a briefing on a posting. If you think that posting is right for you, head into that bay to accept the assignment. Yeah, we're still in the course, basically, of... This is the, a rather lengthy character creation um, section. Um, which actually is not that... Um, it's not that... Um, important in the sense that it doesn't really determine your character. It only gives you some, um, and the audio is quite glitched out. It gives you uh, some minor, um, yeah, advance when benefits in certain abilities. The UNN Lucille is looking for an ops training officer to learn the ship's navigation and data control systems. You'll get your feet wet with the high tech systems, but also expect some heavy lifting. Yeah, this um, gives one one point in hack and one point in strength. The UNM Lucille is looking for an engineer's mate to help maintain the ship's core energy systems. There's some heavy lifting involved, sailor, but you'll learn your way around the high-tech equipment. Okay, this um, yeah, this gives you one point in repair and one point in strength. Repair is actually um, a very useful skill. Um, because it's used, if I recall correctly, to repair broken um, weapons. So earlier we had to use this maintenance tool, not repair tool, maintenance tool to improve the quality of a weapon. But um, when a weapon is sufficiently degraded, it actually breaks and you can't use a maintenance tool on it. You have to repair it, which, repair it, which requires obviously the repair skill. So this is uh, useful. Um, but we really want to play as a hacker character, so that's not... The UNN Lucille is looking for volunteers for their military police detachment. Those sailors can get pretty rowdy on these year-long cruises. So you better not be afraid of a tussle. Yeah, so that's not that use. Okay. Uh, plus one modify and what, plus one strength. Um, again, not what we want. So we'll go for... Uh, the UNN Lucille is looking for... This option. The UNN Lucille is looking for an ops training officer to learn the ship's navigation and data... Okay, um, yeah. So that was one year in training. The lap. February 13th, 2012. The tour of duty aboard the UNN Lucille has concluded. You spent a productive year. Captain Mayer was pleased with your... With your brr, I can't speak. Captain Mayer was pleased with your work, especially the initiate, initiative you showed in physical training. A friendly insign showed you some backdoors into the ship's primary data loop and you spent your time off pumping good old-fashioned iron. You've got plus one hack and plus one strength. Brr. And again, we were pushed into this uh, room by some force. Okay. Hmm. Can't actually enter these uh, screens, but you, for some reason, yeah. Um, so this is actually the same level. Um, as before. With some minor changes, for instance, this guy now seems to actually be lo looking at the screen. Um, 
these um, these things are unchanged however there's also a little Easter egg um, that can be seen here but I think it's it appears somewhat later um, let me check yeah this is later okay and for one moment I thought that this woman was naked, but that's just the way her, her dress looks. Okay. Next, um, yeah. Next choices. The UNN Carfax is undertaking a mission to examine a newly discovered Class B comet approaching the outer solar system. You'll likely pick up some useful skills working with the high-tech navigation systems aboard this newly commissioned heavy cruiser. Hmm. Um, I must admit, I actually don't know what cyber affinity actually is. Um, but I suppose it's makes you better attacking. Ugh. The UN and Pierce is ferrying liberated political prisoners back home from their detention near Saturn. The Pierce has been assigned a detachment of Marines and needs sailors to load, administer, and maintain the arms on board the ship. So, um, I'm a bit tempted to. The maintenance skill would be very useful because then you could use these maintenance tools. Mm. Laverne, Florida hosts the Navy's premier tactical training school. While maybe not as respected as the Marines facility at Fort Bush, there's a lot to be learned here. On the other hand, standard weapons are also they are important um, because you are forced to use them. But I think we will still go with cyber affinity, and I hope that that's not a mistake. It maybe is. Um, and Captain Captain Leah is also serving at the ship, apparently. February 11th, 2113. Your tour of duty aboard the UNN Carfax has concluded. It was a good year for you, but not a great one for the Carfax. After taking a surprise hit from a small meteorite that separated from the larger mass, the Carfax was forced to limp home with 100, 123 casualties, including the chief navigation officer. You stepped in and filled his shoes, and by the end of the year, you became quite skilled with a newer neuro-nav interface. You gained plus two cybernetic affinity. Brrr. Again, we got we got pushed uh, into this into the room, and this is this is the Easter egg that I was talking about. Um, hey, Macarena, that is the Spanish pop song um, that was quite quite popular. Where are you actually going? Um, quite popular in the nineties. Okay, what is what is this guy doing? Hmm. Um, I don't think that. Okay, this is actually not what happens. What usually happens is appears to be a bug. Um, let us check back for our good old friend in the cargo bay. Okay, he, see, he seems not to have changed at all. Okay. Um, yeah, so it is the final, the last decision to be made. And again, I, um, I would like to yeah, apologize for the sound level. Um, probably in retrospect, I will have added it. I will have even out these sound levels um, to some extent. I hope this will get better when we actually play, start to play the main game. The Navy's Mary Curie Research Facility on Aquinas 4 is currently conducting research on a new strain of space-borne virus that killed 220,000 citizens of New Atlanta. To lift the quarantine, we must determine how the virus pierced the city's micro-nanite shielding. 
Yeah. Um, the research, the research skill. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's not that it's not extremely important to have, but it's nice. It's nice nice to have. The Navy maintains a survival training school on the surface of Io, the third moon of Jupiter. Pros. There's no better way to improve stamina and survival skills. Cons, the 21.2% mortality rate. Mm, endurance, I'm actually not sure what it does. Um, which, kind of, which is kind of embarrassing, embarrass, embarrassing since I have already played this game, but... Um, yeah, I just forgot what it does. I think it also... Well, it, for instance, your running speed um, depends on your endurance skill. The Navy strongly encourages every sailor to undertake some amount of zero-g training. A year at the Yamamoto space station in Earth's orbit will more than suffice. Uh, what was it actually agility? I think it was agility. So we'll, uh, we'll go for agility, hoping that is it does well make us faster. Um, because often you can just run away from things. February 9th, 2114. Your tour of duty at Yamamoto Station has concluded. You certainly weren't prepared for the events of this year. Captain Willits was never popular with his men, but you never expected half the crew to mutiny. The third day spent regaining control of the ship, with the captain lent you, with the captain lent you a grace and agility you never knew you were capable of. You've gained plus two agility. Steady yourself, soldier. This is Dr. Janice Polito of the Computer Ops Staff of the Von Braun. You're safe for the time being. You're recovering from the effects of surgery and will be unable to remember any of the events of the last few weeks. You're on board the starship Von Braun and something's gone very, very wrong. Some kind of force has hijacked this ship. That's why you volunteered to be implanted with some experimental cybernetic implants. Rely on your cyber interface. It just might save your life. You must find an elevator and come up to Deck 4 to meet me. Deck 4. Can you remember that? But keep your eyes open. They're after us both now. I volunteered for cybernetic implants. Funny thing, I can't remember that. Probably due to my amnesia, of course. And again, we were... we're we were pushed into this scenery by some unknown force. Um, and is yeah, could have been the game engine. Um, and interesting, um, so this game was actually quite notable for having, uh, for its time, 
some advanced 3D sound technology, which uh, is clearly demonstrated by me right now. Okay. Watch out. I'm getting strange readings from that radar dish outside the window. It's become unstable due to... Move! Take cover! Okay, um, yeah, as, as you can see, I'm still very prone to jump scares. Okay, and this is probably the most important thing we will, we will ever own in this game. A very solid wrench. Uh, should be familiar from Bioshock, in case you have played this game. Um... Can't actually destroy corpses. And when we'll come back, folks, we will figure out well, probably not figure out what's going on the what's going on at the Von Braun. Um but we will try. And we will start to play the game proper. So until next time folks, until then.